Hi everyone. Today I'm going to show you a way to make garlic oil that tastes like nothing else. So if you look at the title, it says olive oil infused garlic. And you think, well, shouldn't it be the other way around? It should be garlic infused olive oil, shouldn't it? No, this is not a typo. It is exactly what it is. If you think about the garlic oil you've seen, you know, a big boss of olive oil with a few cloves of garlic at the bottom, think again. Not with this recipe. None of that business. This recipe is all about garlic. So if this recipe was a movie, the garlic would take the leading role. And the olive oil is the supportive best friend that kind of binds everything together. It would not be a great movie. So I learned this recipe quite a few years ago when I was visiting Taiwan and I saw a lady demonstrating it on TV. And I remember thinking, wow, what a fantastic way to use garlic. I mean, I love garlic and I love garlic oil. So it was a dream recipe. I mean, the recipe was so easy. So I remember in my head and uh, when I came back to London, I tried it immediately and it turned out so beautifully and I've been making it ever since. So shout out to the lady. Um, I have to say, I can't remember who it was anymore, but um, thank you for the recipe. And uh, today I'm going to pass it over to you guys and hopefully it's going to enhance your life like it did to mine. So let me show you how to make it. So the ingredients you need. So as it's all about garlic, we need tons of garlic. So what I've got here, I've got about 400 grams of garlic here. So this is the amount I'm going to use. We also need some olive oil, the garlic's best friend. For this recipe, I recommend that you use the best olive oil you've got in your cupboard. It would definitely be worth it. And on top of that, you need a mason jar, like an airtight jar. We're going to preserve the garlic and oil in there. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to prepare the garlic. You could punch it like this to break it up. Or you can just use a knife to pry them loose. As long as they separate, it doesn't matter. So there are a couple of ways you can peel your garlic more efficiently than just manually peeling them. So I learned on the internet, why don't you just take two metal bowls, put the garlic inside and cut them together and then shake violently until the skin is separated from the garlic. Let me demonstrate. So I'm using my metal steamers here. So I've got some garlic inside. I'm gonna just use another steamer. And um, so what you're supposed to be doing is actually to shake it. Sorry about the noise. Shake it around. As you can see, it's not the most um, pleasurable thing to do. It's very, very loud. If you have neighbors, you're probably not going to be very popular. So it's loud, but um, as you can see that it does separate the skin from the garlic reasonably well. And um, you still need to peel them, but they kind of come up. You could try this. So you could use this method if you're living on the mountain by yourself or you don't like your neighbors very much. But personally, I prefer the second method, which is to use a food processor. I think it will work for most food processors, but what you need is kind of an attachment like this, which is not a blade. So this is actually used for um, kneading dolls, that kind of attachment. Basically what we're trying to do is to shut the garlic from separating from the skin, but not chopping them. So if you have any attachment that's similar to this, that can kind of create that friction, but not chopping the garlic, you can use it. So let me show you how to do it. So I'm going to use this attachment. And I've got my garlic all broken loose and just pop the garlic inside. And what you want to do is to pulse it quite gently. And do it a few times. Okay, so this should do it. As you can see, the skin is still attached. Some of the skin has come off, a lot of them are not, but this is totally okay because now they will be really easy to peel off. So as you can see, easy peasy. Okay, so I've got my garlic all peeled here. It didn't really take that long, to be honest. So now I want to do take a baking tray and then cover it with a baking sheet or tin foil, and then just pop your garlic 
inside the tray. And then we're going to sprinkle just about a teaspoon of salt for this amount of garlic. And we're going to just sprinkle on top. And now we're going to add in a teaspoon of water as well. So what you want is really small amount of water, just so the salt can be attached to the garlic. So we just want to sprinkle it quite gently and then use your capable hands to mix, mix it together. Okay, so now it's ready to go into the oven. So you want to preheat the oven to 220 degrees and then pop the tray in. So we're not trying to roast the garlic. What we're trying to do is to tenderize them to bring out all the flavors. So it depends on your oven, you could take from 10 minutes to 15. I don't want to give you precise time because I want you to check every five minutes or so. So we don't want to brown them. As soon as they go slightly tender to touch and slightly translucent, it's time to take them out. Okay, here we go. So I've taken it out of the oven. And sorry, the oven is still going. The noise is still there. So it's quite warm to touch, but not scorching. And then when you touch them, they're a little bit soft, a little bit squeezy, but not mushy. And this is the perfect state. So what we want to do now is to take the jar, the mason jar, and then we're going to transfer the garlic into the jar. So do this carefully. It should be hot to touch, but not so much it burns your skin. So let me just pack it in. And it's important to do it hot because we need a temperature for it to mingle with the olive oil. Okay, so as you can see, and this is what I mean about leading roll. This is all about garlic. So what we want to do now while it's still hot is to pour in this gorgeous extra virgin olive oil. So here we go. Just go for it until it fills the top and cover all the garlic. So beautiful. So make sure the garlic is totally submerged in the oil and then cover it up. So here's the garlic oil, but you can't have it immediately. You have to leave it to cool and put it in the fridge and let it rest for a minimum 24 hours. So what I've got here is one I made yesterday. So it's been in the fridge for about 24 hours. So I just want to show the comparison. I mean, visually, you probably can't tell the difference that much. So when we made the garlic and oil, they're, they're still separated. They just met, okay? And the longer you leave it, the more flavor it takes on, the more mature it gets. So if you leave them to mingle in the fridge for a while, the flavor is totally different. Now, the garlic oil will be filled with all the fragrance from the garlic and is ready to use. And now I'm going to show you how I use it. So one of my favorite ways to use the oil is to drizzle it on vegetables. So I've got some um, asparagus here that I just lightly cook with some water in the pan. So here's the oil that I made from yesterday. So I want to show you what it's like. So you can see the garlic is glistening with the oil and they're soft and tender and mild. So what you want to do is take a clean spoon, always use a clean spoon so you don't contaminate it. And just scoop the garlic along with the oil and drizzle on top of the vegetables. The smell is fantastic. So the garlic will be quite mild and sweet to eat. And I like to put tons of garlic on it. And then I've got some toasted pine nuts and just sprinkle a few on top. It's such a great combination. And then maybe a cup of tomatoes on the side. So all my favorite things. There you go, perfect. Oh my goodness. The kitchen is just filled with this wonderful, wonderful garlic smell as if you just walked into an Italian restaurant. So here's my vegetable drizzle with this gorgeous garlic oil. The smell is just wonderful. So I sprinkle a little bit of sea salt and uh, now I'm going to just eat it. I love asparagus. I can eat it all day. Oh, my goodness. The oil is seriously, seriously good. I'm overwhelmed every time I eat it. Doesn't matter how many times. Mm, the oil is just so delicious. And here's the garlic. Mm, it still has that slight garlic punch that we all love. 
but at the same time it's still really tender and sweet as well. It's just such a great way to eat garlic. Mm. I say most of the time I use it raw. I don't cook it because I want to preserve all the flavor there is. You can drizzle it on your zucchini noodles or uh, shiitake even and uh, any kind of vegetables or salad it would just work wonderfully. So this is the jar we just made and um, it's still a little bit warm so you want to leave it cool to room temperature um, before you put it into a fridge and uh, once in the fridge you can probably keep it up to I say from my experience about 30 days no problem but obviously use a clean spoon every time you, you take oil and garlic out. So in the process you can top up with some oil if you want to and uh, but obviously the more oil you top up the less intense garlic flavor it would be so you want to kind of look at the balance just make sure that it's always covered with the oil the longer you leave it the more tender the garlic would be you can be creative for how you use it um, you can use it on your wrap if you're making my uh, flatbread wrap and uh, on top of salad vegetables anything you can think of so there you go now the recipe is yours so follow me on instagram if you haven't already i post the food I eat and recipes of the channel on a regular basis and um, so check out my Instagram. So uh, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time. Bye.